Welcome everyone. Thanks. This is the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group and it's the 26th of March. Thanks very much for being with us. I'm going to share my screen so we can see the agenda. And you should see the agenda on screen. Do I do you see it? Oh, everybody's muted. That won't help. I see it. Great. I, I just opted out to note. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. All right. So here are the topics that let's first review topics. So open action items. Uh, GSOC 2020 custom Jenkins build service discussion with Slayton. Um, Oleg, that's list is deferred and Slayton's not in this session. So I yeah, so uh, as a follow up, I uh, had a special session uh, for this project. This session actually happened uh, this morning, so some like three hours ago. Uh, we had three students there, uh, and we discussed a lot of topics. So I believe that uh, this item can be closed. Okay, so, so I'm just take it off yeah. the agenda. That's uh, Windows Service Wrapper. We discussed everything uh, at the last meeting. I don't have any specific updates there, except the fact that now it's a separate GitHub organization. So we are setting a common environment uh, for that, including uh, additional GitHub apps, uh, including the new release flow. Most likely we will uh, move to Azure DevOps because the project is based on .NET, so we may use its ecosystem. Um, and yeah, that's in progress. And for uh, with regards to GSOC, everyone is uh, welcome to participate. We've got uh, two proposals so far. Uh, maybe we'll go and get more. So let's see. Excellent. Okay, great. All right. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I'd like to put platform SIG roadmap proposals on the agenda. Uh, we may want to put other topics first. I've got a number of proposals there just to be on the agenda. Are there other other agenda items that I should be adding here? Um, Jim, for instance, anything that you want to address on uh, PowerPC or Series 390 support? Uh, I was just looking for status mostly on uh, the progress of power and uh, SU90 being incorporated into the infrastructure. Uh, and then, uh, well, we have the open action item about the PR. Um, so we'll be good on that. Great. All right. Let's, and so let's put that in. Uh, Alex, anything that you need to put on the agenda? I know we've got Windows Installer as a past topic that may have finally broken loose because we actually have a code signing key. Yeah, I haven't heard. I need to talk to um, Olivier today about whether he's tried. I, I don't know if he's received his certificate yet, um, but once that's in place, there be, might be some debug and stuff. Okay. So what I'm going to suggest is let's bring those topics uh, PowerPC, et cetera, above the roadmap discussion, because I think the roadmap discussion is more conceptual than it is project status. Any objections? Any other topics? Okay, good, then let's go ahead. So we've got the topics, open action items. Yes, I'm still embarrassed that I have not submitted the JEP for Docker operating system support. Apologies. Uh, Windows support policy, Oleg, I assume no JEP for that yet. Yeah, so we started some discussions about what we want to do for Windows Service Wrapper and other components. So for me, it will be a natural outcome. And yeah, right now I'm moving uh, some bits of uh, documentation uh, to Jenkins IO. And when I complete that, maybe I'll write something for Windows and propose it, uh, maybe not even as a JEP, uh, but as a new page. Mm. Yes. Oh. Well, JEP is cool, but uh, JEP uh, would need, uh, so it uh, implies that there would be discussion. And for now, Windows support, we have usual suspects, so we can just uh, figure out at the basic level. Let's see. But the I item like there. 
good. Okay. And then Alex on the Windows installer, I'm just going to put here checking today. So, okay, if we note that uh, code signing has, has made its first progress in uh, months. <laughs> That's really, I, I was delighted. That, that is so marvelous. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so to be specific, we got the certificate which we could try to use already. So we need to deploy it. Great. Thank you. Then we've got the Docker build rework PR. Uh, there was certainly some some intense interest recently, intense uh, and frustrated interest from Daniel Beck recently at the uh, during the recent security release. Something went wrong, and he spent thirty minutes waiting for a build. Right, and that was that's a, that's not a time when you want people having to wrestle with slow or, or long-running builds yeah so for that that PR um, um, Oliver uh, did look at it and approve it um, the PR uh, yeah I think that link actually works uh, mm -hmm. 922 uh, he did look at it and approve the code changes uh, so I don't know exactly what you guys' process is in terms of uh, merging that PR, uh, but it'd be great to merge it and then uh, work with um, Oliver uh, to actually implement the new infrastructure. Because we, I think, Alex, you you, you let me know that uh, we got the ARM resources up on AWS, right? Yeah, that's correct. We, I don't know how much we've tested it, but they are available, yeah. Sweet. So it looks like we have all the architectures that we'll need now. Uh, you know, S390 power, x86, and ARM. Uh, so it would be nice to kind of um, try, start implementing them and connecting everything up um, and see if this PR will actually work. Or not the PR will work, but, um, you know, actually see implementing it will work. What I was, uh, what I would propose is um, someone who has trusted access on that repository to um, basically create a dummy merge request or pull request based on yours, so that it actually mm -hmm. will run the the Jenkins file updates and so forth. Um, and then we can verify that it's all working in the infrastructure, and then we'd be able to merge your PR. Uh, good yeah. point. Because you're right that the Docker or the the Jenkins file is not honored unless you have trusted access, right? Right, yeah. Okay, and that's, all right. Good, okay. Um, how about I'll take that action item, or Alex, do you want to look up the list of people who have trusted access? I don't know how to get that list. Um, yeah, I can look at that. I'm, I'm pretty sure I have trusted access, but I'll, I'll double check. Yeah, Alex should have it. So it's Alex, me, Mark, Olivier, uh, at least from usual suspects at platform seat. Okay. Great. Excellent. All right. Anything else on, on that particular action item? Okay, great. Let's proceed then. So Oleg, you had said GSOC Windows Service Wrapper. Anything else we need to note here in our notes? No, I think uh, that's fine. I put some items and generally yeah, we will get more details uh, in May uh, when we publish the poll. So, so um, there is uh, nothing specifically impacting Jenkins project right now except the fact that uh, there is a bunch of features incoming and we are already a bit behind the versions because I didn't have time to submit upgrade requests and we discovered a couple of regressions, so I put it on hold. Uh, but yeah, in principle, um, Windows Service Wrapper now is much stable and we have uh, new .NET versions, we have new .NET Core native uh, 
uh, executables, uh, which are quite heavy, but uh, we can consider them to remove the dependency on the .NET platform. For example, for Windows installer, it could be reasonable because for Windows installer, we can just replace Windows service wrapper by a native executable. And if it waits 30 megabytes, okay, it's not a big deal for the installer. So there is definitely some positive impact uh, on the Jenkins uh, setup, um, but yeah, we still need to process that. So with that, that, oh, go ahead. No. Okay, uh, you have questions, so maybe you can I, the, the question was, would that would then avoid the Windows installer needing to, to declare a .NET dependency? Is that what you're saying yes. or, oh. Yeah, so specifically for Windows installer, I mean MSI packages, we can do it right now. Because right now we agreed that we drop it X, uh, sorry, uh, we drop 32 bit system support, so we can uh, just uh, embed one installer for uh, MD64. Well, assuming that we don't uh, target uh, Windows on ARM and other bits. And uh, it just adds 30 megabytes. So instead of 70, you get uh, okay 100, but you don't need .NET. So for MSI installer, I think it's no brainer that we can uh, switch to this mode. Alex, does that does that sound reasonable to you? I love the idea because one less dependency. <laughs> yeah, I mean most. Uh... Windows Server platforms that people are going to be running a, a, a master on will have .NET already, so that's it's not as big of a problem as it used to be, but it'd definitely be something we can look at for sure. So our main problem with .NET is about uh, specific behavior because uh, right now we have executable for six, sorry for uh, four point six point one, so basically the recent .NET version. But we already hit uh, problems with TLS implementation, with other bits. So they got uh, results recently, thanks to Nextern, who became Windows Service Wrapper maintainer uh, also. Uh, but uh, yeah, still, for me, native installer would be a preference there. But we also have uh, 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 Windows Service Wrapper bundled two extra times in Jenkins. One in Jenkins Core directly, another one in uh, Windows Agent Installer model. And there it's much more challenging. I'm not sure what exactly would we do there. My personal preference is to just detach it to a plugin. But uh, it may impact installation experience, so I'm not 100% confident about that. Okay, so that are those two additional bundles that you two additional bundle locations also included in the Windows installer? Would they naturally be there? So we would increase the yes. size 90 megabytes instead of just 30. Uh, well, technically, yes, if we press it as is. Uh, because uh, currently there are two jars, so uh, yeah, no, two um, executables included uh, directly within the Jenkins work file as resources, and uh, our Windows installer uh, includes it third time, and we don't care about that because right now it's something like 500 kilobyte. But uh, if you wanted to do the same approach with native uh, executables everywhere, it's a big pain. So um, for me, it's no go. And uh, I will be doing that only if we detach uh, Windows Agent Installer and maybe um, uh, Jenkins Master's uh, Windows Service uh, installation functionality to a separate plugin. Got it. OK. Because yeah, right now you can install Jenkins as a Windows Service uh, after running it as a work file. To be honest, I have never used this option, so I, <laughs> I cannot say uh, who would need it. So detaching it uh, to a plugin doesn't sound, sound like a bad idea. I agree. It's If people are going to run as a service, they're going to use the MSI, in my opinion. Well, uh, MSI or just standalone installation. Yeah, there are obvious issues because right now, if you want uh, 
the your Jenkins to install it itself as a service, you need to run a Jenkins as an administrator. And uh, there are so many reasons why it's a bad idea. And right. I don't that's you know, want to continue. Bad. That's that's bad to the level of crazy idea. It's, should I run Jenkins as root on a Linux machine? No. Should I run as an administrator on Windows? Probably not. Yeah. Okay. Great. Anything else on Windows Service Wrapper? Nope. Okay, Jim, let's take it. PowerPC and Series 390. So, yeah, so that, 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 that's more of a question for you. I was looking at the JIRA board, uh, and I see that you were commenting on those issues. I was wondering what was like mostly the status with that about getting everything connected. Yeah, so so the let's let's take the the two two stories that have a really positive spin first. So <laughs> PPC 64 LE uh, and uh, both PPC 64 LE and S390X are serving mark weight very well. They're, awesome. I, I have agents connected. They are running uh, builds and tests of as Java as Linux and Java and Maven labeled agents. So I use them freely. Uh, they are also running specifically builds for Git client plugin, Git plugin, and platform labeler plugin. Now the one the one flaw in this at the moment is I'm using OpenJ9 on Series 390, and that okay. makes me a little nervous because th that's the only place that I'm using OpenJ9. I've had no problems with it. Um, uh, should I think I should use Adopt OpenJDK on S390, but I need to be sure that it doesn't degrade performance. I need the JIT that that gives me acceptable performance. Mm -hmm. And now, Jim, does is the JIT available for Java 8 on Series 390 using Adopt Open JDK? It, it is. So the from my understanding, the on Java 8 uh, S390, you have to you you'll, you'll need to use Adopt Java with I think uh, Open J9. So Open J9 is just a uh is it jvm or is it a package uh, i forget i forget what they they call it but um so in in adopt you have the hotspot implementation and you have the open j9 implementation for java 8 and i think it's the only java version that has this is uh java 8 hotspot uh from oracle is missing that jit i think uh, i want to say open uh jdk java 8 Open J9, it definitely has a JIT. I want to say the hotspot for that version might have the JIT. That's something I can go out and reach out and make sure it does. Yeah, and uh, that would be a, that's, so I'm already using Adopt Open J9 implementation on 390, S390, and it works great. So that mm -hmm. one I can confirm. It's fast. It's actually faster than some of the other machines I'm using, so I'm really impressed. Um, so, it's the it's within you, you basically a want to adopt make sure you, with hotspot. Okay, so you want to make sure hotspot runs. Okay, right. Yeah, and I know I know past eight, you won't you won't have a problem with this. Uh, it's just I know eight uh, is is tricky, uh, tricky. Uh, with it. Okay, so I'm going to drop an action item for there there for you, Jim. There we go. Okay, got it. All right, very good. I could do the experiment, but it's a lot simpler for me if you answer, even if you're willing to provide the answer. That's great. No, that's 100%. Um, so after we get that test done, what are the other blockers, I guess, or other stuff that needs to be added? I saw, I think, something about automating the, the infrastructure on the JIRA tickets uh, and then connecting them to uh, CI Jenkins IO and trusted CI Jenkins IO. Right. Well, so so first first step we need is we need the other hardware for PowerPC 64 LE. Mm -hmm. um, right now, the the we're using a jump host 
to yep. a transient or to a temporary machine, right? And it works. It just, mm -hmm. it has a complication that is much harder to use than if we've got a standard, it's available just directly through SSH. Yeah. And I can, I don't know how fast I can move up the, the temporary host. I think the lawyers are still looking at uh, the terms of use uh, sheet for power because te technically, I guess they didn't have one um, while the S390 Linux One Community Cloud did. Uh, that's a lot more common. I, I, you know, I'm really an S390 kind of person. The power is mostly just, I know a couple of the power team. Um, mm. So the power team doesn't have one or didn't have one. So they're in the process of making and talking uh, to the lawyers to make a whole new one. Uh, or not a new one, just the first of its kind. Um, but what I can do is I'll reach out to them, see if I can punch a hole, uh, and maybe do like a you know port uh, you know 22 or 222 um, for you guys, so that eliminates the need for the jump hosts. Uh, would that help you guys? Kind of in the meantime for that. Let me let me talk to let me take the action item to talk to Olivier. Because okay. we've, you are you are bringing the the same story that we had with the code signing, right? Which is as soon as we get a legal team involved, there is an indeterminate period where. So let me talk to Olivia Bernin about using a jump host because, for me, it is working, and mm -hmm. it just it requires a little bit of a little bit of setup. Yes. Um, but let me talk to him about that to see if he's willing to to use that kind of setup in in the, the ci.jenkins.io and trusted ci so okay. let me put that as an action item for me and i'll, I'll also follow up i have to all to follow up with status for the the legal document anyways also just ask them if they could punch a hole for ssh is, is the agent just use ssh or is it use the other posts or other ports i think you mentioned you could set up either or yeah, well so it's okay. certainly easier to use SSH because then we manage it directly but that's true we mm. could use JNLP couldn't we all like well we could use uh, JNLP uh, we could use web sockets though for web sockets uh, it would be preferable uh, to wait till the next uh, LTS because we have a bug fix which is needed to stabilize the more it's currently an experimental feature uh, Technically, we could also use remoting over Apache Kafka, though I'm not sure how it would help in this case. Uh, but yeah, if we need to pass through firewalls, through proxies, maybe looking at web sockets is a good idea. And I think that it would be also helpful to the Jenkins community because uh, yeah, some of the coding for this feature would be reasonable. Very good. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's a, an Olivier topic as well. Mm -hmm. And this one is good. Okay. Yeah. Good point. Um, after remoting 4.3, right? Yeah. It's not only remoting 4.3. Uh, so it was introduced uh, in the new LCS baseline. So at the moment, CI Jenkins IO is updated to 2.222.1. And uh, this version uh, includes WebSocket support. Uh, but we know about one bug. Uh, basically, messages beyond 64K, they're not uh, delivered correctly. This bug has already been submitted or uh, fixed for that. It's LTS candidate, but it won't uh, get into the release until two next month. So we cannot uh, try out the communication. Uh, it will likely work. But it won't be stable until dot uh, two in one month. Right. So for large, yeah, for a sixty-four k byte. Uh, Just a second. Yeah, I'm looking for the ish uh, number. Yeah, and I can I can attach it later. That's very kind of you. That's mm -hmm. great. Okay. Good. So so that. And now, Jim, I'd propose we talk to the next topic, Series 390. And there, I think the, the next steps are, 
uh, we have the S390X host and mm -hmm. its final uh, hardware uh, ready to use. So I think there the action item for me is Mark, talk to Olivier on next steps on those tickets, on that ticket. Oh, thank you, Oleg. Because it, it right. is definitely working for me now. I, and the we've also got the Open J9 question, <clears throat> excuse me, mm -hmm. the Open J9 question uh, versus hotspot on Java 8. And, and that, Jim, that's just one we need an answer on. Ultimately, if we have to use OpenJ9 for builds, we can. I assume OpenJ9 executes hotspot or bytecode, no problem from Java 8 since it's running Jenkins just fine. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, I, I think there's just a performance issue. I don't think that, uh, you know, if you run, you know, hotspot or whatever that doesn't have the JIT, it'll just be slow. Uh, it should run fine. Okay. Good. Very good. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Anything else on Series 390 and PowerPC? Oh, that was it for me. Okay. So Docker PR status and progress. So this one is Mark and Alex. And Alex, I think you described it very well. It's uh, Alex to create or find someone to do the, the shadow PR. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, I'll do that today. Thanks, Alex. Uh, what, what, what will the shadow PR do? Just uh, trigger builds or trigger the? It will. It will allow the actual Jenkins file to be used from the PR. Um, we uh, we don't have be, because Jenkins files can do things um, that can be dangerous. We um, block um, Jenkins files from PRs being actually used unless the person has specific status on the um, repository. Okay, makes sense. And, yeah, we we do this every so often when it's something like this. Uh, I mean, we've done it on the Docker agents, um, PRs, and stuff like that when there are changes that are incorporated into the Jenkins file, just so we can verify that things look good on the infrastructure. Anything else on that? So I've got um, Mark to do compatibility testing and uh, compatibility review because I there's a piece of me that always worries about any change to we may need some form of upgrade guide uh, I don't know that we have a vehicle to look to deliver such a concept so keeping things rigorously compatible is is much better Anything else, Alex, from you on the Windows installer? No, just waiting to get the um, certificate in and the release process up and running so I can make sure all the, the stuff is working. Right, very good, thank you. Thanks very much for your work on that. Great, the next topic I had was roadmap proposals. So good that we've got Oleg with us today. So what Oleg has done is he has proposed and it's been accepted by the governance board that we will use the concept of a roadmap in the Jenkins project. And the, it'll be posted on Jenkins.io. I like this crucial piece. Roadmaps have places, not dates. So, so they don't describe when things will happen. They describe destinations we're striving to reach. Uh, there are three three terms identified, current, which is things that are in progress right now. Uh, work is being done. Near term, uh, I think of that as either in progress or very, very soon to start. 
and then future, which will be some time, but we envision this is a, a likely destination shortly after we get done with things that are on current and near term. Oleg, are those fair ways to describe the roadmap concepts or would you like to use better words? No, I think uh, that's fine. Uh, so uh, the terminology is up to review. My plan is still to uh, formally file a job uh, because right now in, it's in the Google Doc, but it's open for feedback. And yeah, everything uh, is as you described. And uh, another specific that uh, the roadmap uh, basically encourages uh, six sub projects and other entities within the project to come up with their own project items. We do not uh, plan to force any kind uh, of roadmap on contributors. It's not how Jenkins project operates. Uh, we don't uh, want to make it extensive for everything, but um, operating entities like platform special interest group, uh, they are more than welcome uh, to come up with their suggestions and to put them on the public roadmap so that uh, they can improve visibility of their projects. Great. Thank you very much. Now, I just realized that based, Jim, on your description, we should probably put Series 390 first on the list because that seems like that's the strongest focus for you. And PowerPC is great, but is that a fair reordering in terms of? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that would probably be the best idea. Okay. So three, three platforms that we think we should add support for. I didn't put ARM32, anything like that. We've got a picture for these and I think all of these I would call current or near term current because work is in progress for those two and Alex arm 64 call it near term call it current what I, I would say I mean it's just a matter of trying it on one of the um, a, uh, AWS instances um, all the software should be installed and ready to build so we just need to try it. So at okay. yeah, near term, probably. Okay, so I'm gonna put it as near term. Assume we don't have a PR yet that's proposing it. We need some experiments, so great, okay. Well, we do have a PR. The, the PR that, that Jim oh. submitted has ARM64 in it, so. Okay, great, all right, so that's excellent. Anything else on platforms that should be listed here is everybody in this meeting okay with those three as as sort of a platform roadmap roadmap items from the the, the SIG? In principle, yes. It looks good. Okay, cool. Next topic then was JDKs. Here we've got today we have um, Open JDK in our images as provided by the operating system vendors. And one of the proposals of the in was either to add or to change to use adopt open JDK so that instead of relying on vendor provided CentOS, Debian, etc., we switch to JDK provider images that are built by adopt. Uh, that one feels to me like it's current because well, or is it current? Do we have a PR pending on this one? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so um, that may be best to call it near term. Yeah, um, I'm still working on reaching parity with what you guys offer for the base images and what um, uh, what Dot offers for base images for the official Docker images. They have all the base images you guys support in the unofficial repo, and I'm still working with them to get the PR approved uh, by Docker, uh, the you know Docker official library, official image library, uh, so that we can use the official images, not the unofficial. Oh, got it. Okay. So once Great. that comes, the, the PR should be easy enough to swap in and swap out, or swap in you know swap out the from statement to adopt. Excellent. All right. Okay, and then open J9 for Docker images. Jim, do we have a PR on that one or is that one's, that one's also near term? Ooh, uh, I think you guys do have a PR for that. 
uh, I think did he get merged? Jack? Yeah, I think I think that one got merged. Oh. Um, yeah, I think that's but, if you look at the base, uh, you know, uh, base folder in Jenkins. I think there's an OpenJ not specific image. So is it an experimental? Yeah, or it's only it, it's only in the Jenkins for eval right now, I believe. Okay, so it's so it qualifies as current if it's an experimental for my my mental model. Good, excellent. Okay. And then Java next. This one I think is future because we don't have any any plan beyond Java 11 right now. I think we can predict safely some someday in the future a new Java LTS will arrive. Oh, oh, that's right. Uh, this is a Matt Sicker topic. We've got somebody in the Jenkins project that is actively involved with is it Maven Oleg? I forget where, but he's deeply involved in the Open JDK releases and um, we'll ask him to present in a future meeting. Yeah, so we had uh, some meetings uh, before, but yeah, I agree with Mark after Java 11J, we uh, stopped doing uh, Java related topics. So assuming there are contributors who are interested to work in this area and who work on, uh, want to work on future Java, um, I think it would be nice to have a status call or whatever because there is a lot of changes in the recent versions and we still have platform seek mailing list subscribe to Java releases. So uh, I believe everybody gets notifications about uh, release candidates and releases. Right. Great. Yep. Uh, speaking of Java Next, I think that we should talk not only about uh, mainstream Java, we should also talk about um, other GVMs. For example, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of Quarkus and uh, Graal, and uh, I think that we could start discussions about them uh, as potential mainstream, because uh, for example, running uh, Docker images would be interesting. I had a great, well, a good prototype uh, for Jenkins file runner uh, and Quarkus. Obviously, running Jenkins with such framework is a completely different story, especially if you want to get uh, to a native executable, which would be also interesting. Uh, well, I don't think it's really possible for Jenkins, to be honest. Uh, but uh, at least exploring such options, maybe doing some prototypes uh, could help. And uh, it's probably an area for collaboration is called native seek if it gets recovered at some point because Quarkus is basically called native Java, it presumes completely different packaging. Uh, but at the same time, you can improve startup uh, speed significantly, you can also solve a lot of other issues. So, I think it would be nice uh, to at least consider that. Not sure about putting it on a uh, roadmap now, but uh, it could be a good clickbait. Right. Well, it's certainly Java Next as a future item. So your thought, if this would be an umbrella where we could, in the future, choose to do a Quarkus or a Growl in addition to, to OpenJDK. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Uh, Alex, are you okay with Windows Installer being on the roadmap? And how would you would you call it near term, future, or current? Um, probably near term because people will start using it actually once the automated core releases are done. So I'm sure there'll be feedback and and some items that need to be updated and taken care of. Now, yep. one that we've never I, I, I that's great with me. One that we've never discussed before was automate core releases, but I think somehow that that fits conceptually under under the platform SIG as well. And I think it should be on, on the roadmap. Oleg, any guidance there? Are you okay if we, we... It is already on the roadmap. Ah, I do not specifically split uh, items to six there. Uh, it's probably a subject for feedback. I created a section, a section for platform support. 
uh, or platform and operating systems, uh, but uh, yeah, automated uh, core releases is basically uh, on the Jenkins core side. Excellent, good. Mm -hmm. So it's there. And then one more that we had discussed last last time, two weeks ago, was HTTPS and HTTP2 support with Jetty. Um, I, my thought was this is one where we were we were we had issues in uh, recent releases that need more tests, right? More tests, uh, more checks for uh, safety and sanity. And it felt like this should be one that we put on and propose as a near term. Objections there? No, it sounds good to me. Okay. All right, we've gone, we've gone beyond the typical time that we like to. Any other topics we need to discuss here before we call this meeting done? Oh, I guess I should tell you what I think the next steps are with Roadmap. I think the next step is, uh, Mark, propose those Roadmap items uh, to the uh, Roadmap PR. Uh, yeah, some of them are already there. A separate pull request. Ah, good, okay. Yeah, so my intention is to actually get a Roadmap PR uh, integrated tomorrow. Okay. Well, assuming that I get any time uh, to get it over the line, uh, but uh, yeah, after that, uh, the approach will be just submit a pull request because the roadmap date is just a JSON. Great. Mm -hmm. All right, I will put that on my action item. Yeah, I checked my Slack again. Sorry. Got it. All right. Anything else we need to we need to discuss in the platform sig today? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Uh, recording will be posted uh, one to two hours from now. I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thanks. Thanks. See you.